Some months ago, I was talking to a very fine friend of mine. And he said, Brother Bram, I believe that you pinned this United States down too close. He said, you're always roaring out the sin and how God is going to punish this nation. I said, he's got to do it in order to be just. He said, but Brother Branham, you forget that this nation was founded upon the scriptures. And our forefathers came here and God gave us this heritage. And we are a religious nation. I said, that is true. All love it. And no one knows how I appreciate this nation. But look, my brother. Israel also was chosen of God. And he sent her prophets and great men. But God cannot stand sin. He made Israel reap every grain they sowed. And if he made Israel reap what she sowed, he'll make us reap what we sow. He is no respecter of person. And we've got to the place to think that because we're resting upon what our forefathers did, or what upon our great founders of our churches, what their great sacrifice was to God, which is all right and so much appreciated. But we cannot draw salvation from what they did. Amen. Salvation is an individual affair between every person and God. Not with our nation, with our church, but with ourselves before God we answer. It's come to the place in our country until in the midst of the most spiritual people that we have. You go to spiritual men and women and you find in their heart that there's something like him. We have been in the last few weeks. I've been going over some of these things and Finding that in the man that I thought was the colonel. Yet I find that they're putting emphasis upon temporal things. Going around and saying, God gives me the biggest so-and-so. God gives me your bluffing. Great material things don't always rest in God's will. God makes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. But what the world needs today is not a bluff of faith to try to bluff yourself into something and call it spiritual. Sometimes faith will do great miracles and still doesn't come from a spiritual heart. Did not our Lord say, many will come to me that day and say, have not I did this and that in your name? And I will confess to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. What is iniquity? It's something that you know to do right and don't do it. I never knew you, he will say. And we're living in that day. What we need today is not a lot of material things. We have that. We don't need greater churches. We don't need greater congregations. We don't need more on radio and on television. We don't need so many more of these things. But what we need today to be spiritual is a person that will humble themselves before God if they haven't got a penny. And will pray to let spirit within them is satisfied with the goodness of God and a revival takes place on the inside of their heart that changes their attitudes and atmosphere that they live in. 
You might not have a pair of shoes on your feet. You might be dressed in rags, but something in your heart saying the melodies of God. Hallelujah. Rather have it than all the money in the world. So you can't say that natural things is always a sign of God's blessing. David spoke that to the Lord and he'd seen the wicked spread forth his, uh, like a great bay tree. But God asked him, did you ever consider him at the end? No matter how good or clothes we wear, how much we have to eat, that isn't what goes in the presence of God. This body that we dwell in perishes regardless of how it's taken care of. But it's the soul that's in man. It's a condition of the spirit that moves into the presence of the living God. But we take things for granted. We think that just because that we are a nation, so had Ahab and all of Israel in that day had taken things for granted that everything was all right. Their priests and preachers had tried to tell them all is well. Everything's just fine. But they had one. He cried out against the wrong thing. Because this one know that a holy God could not be satisfied with modern trends of an unholy religion. So does the God of heaven remain the same today. And all of our efforts and big things that we're trying to do, God will never be pleased outside of an entire sanctified life before Him. We might build schools and shrines and tabernacles. We might have organizations. We might do great things. But yet God won't be satisfied until the human soul becomes a sanctified on the altar of God, consecrated for the works of God. And you don't find that no more. You find our prayer meetings are so weak. Just about a minute of prayer, jump into bed. We find out that happens about once or twice a day. When all of us are guilty, our nation morally is decaying. We've got Billy Grimm's and old Roberts is everywhere. But until there comes a thirsting in the heart of America to bring it back to a living God again, to a living experience, to an undying faith in a living God. We're only beating our brains, as it would say, out. We might walk with our chest out, with our collars turned in the back, and walk down the street and desire to be called doctor or reverend. We might pastor the greatest churches there is in the land. And we might be as pious as we can be that no man can put a finger on our lives. But until that soul that's on the inside of us is on fire for God, until something in there that's yearning after Him, like the heart painted for the water brook, my soul thirst after thee, O oh God. Until we get to that type of an experience. Therefore, communism and so forth will gain the grounds as they're doing. And all the journeying that we can do will never stop it. It's predicted to come. But God is calling to His church.